at its worst, it was like an obsession. Is all I could hear everywhere I went. I'd walk in a room and find the noisiest spot in the room to try and get away from the noise. But now, maybe hear it once a day, if that, you know, I barely notice it anymore. Hey, Tinnitus community, this is Dr. Ben Thompson. In this special podcast, you'll hear me having a more lighthearted, easygoing conversation with Chris someone who found us on YouTube, reached out to our team. I got to know him personally, real gentle soul, and has a great message to share. So I hope you enjoy it. Let me know how it goes. So Chris, you're able to speak to anyone who's watching who has tinnitus. You know, what is your message? What have you learned? What is the wisdom that you want to share with other people? Well, I, I tried everything from acupuncture to ring stop. I mean, there's everything. So I found you through trying to find some noise to go to sleep, go to sleep to. And, uh, I believe it was like crickets or something, you know, and you introduced yourself. And then at first I was like, oh, it's just another, another smoke and mirrors, you know? And then, you know, uh, I gave it a try and yeah, two weeks, two weeks in, I noticed a huge difference, made a huge difference in my life. You know, I, before I woke up every two hours and heart beating out of my chest and yeah, you know, I was living a nightmare, you know. And how long were you struggling with tinnitus before you found us? Well, I'd always kind of had uh, tinnitus. I worked in construction and every now and again I'd be in a quiet room or something and I'd just kind of hear a little bit of ringing uh-huh. and then I'd shrug it off as okay, it was a loud day at work or you know, something like that. And it would go away for a couple months or a year. Sometimes I wouldn't notice it, you know, or go to a loud concert or something. So, uh, but after a little while, I noticed it more and more. So I went to an audiologist and I was like, Hey, you know, what's going on? And he was like, Oh, it's, you just gonna have to learn to live with it. I was like, okay, you know, it wasn't too bad. And then I went to an ENT just to get a second opinion. And, uh, he said the same thing, you know, buy a fan. So I was like, okay. And then about a week later I got a tattoo and then I guess the stress from the tattoo or something, it just kind of triggered. And it was like alarm bells, like, uh, brakes on a train that never stop. Yeah. You know, and, and so I finally, I thought it would go away. I just waited and waited and waited, but yeah, it just got worse and worse. How many months or years did that process last before you ended up getting help? About four months. Got it. Yeah, maybe more. What sound therapy did you end up using? Sounds like you helped. You found some sounds to help fall asleep eventually. What sounds helped you the most? Pink noise is what, what really uh, I pretty much stick stuck to. And what what intensity was tinnitus at its worst, and what is it now? At its worst, it was like an obsession is all I could hear everywhere I went. I'd walk in a room and find the noisiest spot in the room to try and get away from the noise. But now, maybe hear it once a day, if that, you know, I barely notice it anymore. So what would be your advice to your former self who was in the thick of things? It'll get better. (laughs) I, I frequently heard that and didn't fully believe it at the time. I think a lot of people need to hear that message. Now, how much of it getting better was, you know, active things that you were doing or just time, you know, what are your thoughts on that? I tried a lot of different things and not much of any of it helped except for the, the devices. I think some people are often doing the let's wait and see treatment, which is I'm not going to do too much and hopefully this gets better over time. What I find is that that can work for some, but it's a bit of a risky game because when do you know that enough time has passed before it's not getting better? If it gets better a little bit, is that a positive result or not enough? So I totally, totally hear you on that. Um, What was your takeaway from getting professional help for your tinnitus treatment? I don't know, maybe things you learned that you didn't know beforehand. Well, um, I, I knew about behavioral therapy and I, I'd done a little bit of reading. I had a 
couple books on it and I've been doing meditation as well but uh, like I said the the main thing that really I saw a turnaround on was when I started the sound therapy it was something still to this day the only issue I had ever had with it was uh, forgetting they were behind my ears when I hopped in the shower still to this day I haven't worn them in two months and I still check behind my ears before I get wet. <laughs> Good idea. Uh, so has your tinnitus volume decreased? What exactly happened with in your case? It's still there. I can, if I close off my ears or get in a really quiet room, I mean, it's still there. But yeah, it's it's to a minimum. I noticed it because as I was wearing the devices, I would go, I went lower and lower and lower until they were, pretty much at the lowest setting and uh it was still working so okay so you're describing that you had the sound therapy at a level that was lower than your tinnitus and over time as your tinnitus was decreasing in volume the sound therapy didn't need to be as loud so you could decrease it and adjust it as needed over time as well is that correct that's correct okay very good that's i think you're providing a lot of hope for people who you know, might have been in a similar situation as you. That's what we're here to do, I believe, is provide hope and facts and truth and science. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that this is a condition that there's a lot of skepticism and there's a lot of people who have been taken advantage of. There's a lot of things that are sold that don't have any science or validity behind them. And not every treatment, even the best evidence-based ones, are 100% effective, right? So, it's a little tough. What what was your thought on, you know, whether something actually could help and who to trust and all that? There's a, a lot of snake oil out there. I mean, that's that's a hard question to answer. <laughs> I thought buying a bottle of Ringstop from Walgreens would be someone you could trust because Walgreens sells, you know, vitamins and, you know, stuff that's supposed to be real. But I don't know. I, I think that's a, that's a hard one to, to say. Because if you're in Walgreens, that you might think, oh, well, this is a reputable business. They wouldn't part. They wouldn't sell uh, herbal supplements that didn't work. But really, we look into it. There's little to no evidence that herbal supplements work for tinnitus. So is it just an overall health boost? Just like, you know, this might be better for our health and wellness. Is it a placebo effect? Unfortunately, there's, you know, there's a lot of those types of things that are sold and Here's the most interesting thing I've heard on that. I was at a, a live in-person event in New York City. We hosted a tribal health event there, and one of our patients, uh, Steve, he came to the event. And Steve is actually a pharmacist, right? So he's like a doctor of pharmacy. And I asked him, I said, hey, what's your thoughts on you know herbal supplements and medications for tinnitus? And he said, you know, there's really no, no herbal supplements that work for tinnitus, but, but I tried them because I was desperate and... What did I have to lose? I think that really shows how serious of a problem tinnitus is, right? This is a guy who knew, basically knew the science says these likely won't do anything, but he was essentially saying, I don't even care if it's placebo. If it helps me, it's worth it. It's worth 50 bucks. Now, the part of me that doesn't want people to waste their money is like, I hate that. But the part of me that acknowledges that tinnitus is a serious problem and any 10%, 20% boost or benefit matters and is worth it kind of loves that what do you think about all that yeah i mean i guess hope is one of the the biggest things when you have tinnitus and if you could just get an ounce of hope i mean yeah 50 dollars would be worth it how long did you work with dr suzanne may on our team at tribal health in our program for tinnitus i'd say about six months okay and how'd that go? What, what were your takeaways from that? What do you remember? I mean, the, the whole process from start to finish was amazing. You know, everybody super knowledgeable and, you know, is completely different than going to my regular doctor or an ENT or an audiologist. You know, they just say, deal with it, learn to live with it. At Trouble Health, it was more of, hey, we're here for you and, you know, it does get better. And this is, this is the path forward. You know, they... They laid out a plan instead of, you're just going to have to get over it. I'm really glad we could help you out with that. And Dr. Suzanne May is, is excellent. So are you still doing construction? I mean, obviously, it's a loud job. So uh, 
what kind of loud noises are you around these days and how's that going? Well, I mean, I'm a master plumber, so I'm still in construction, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, jackhammers and everything else. So I, I work in construction, but I'm always the guy running around, handing out earplugs, always have been, but, uh, when tinnitus got real bad, it, it took a turn, you know, was, I became even more adamant about ear protection, just running around and put these at, put them at, I don't care. It's super important. You know, I do a lot of uh, podcasts and the other day I had uh, Dr. James Henry, who is a very well-known researcher in the tinnitus world. And his strongest message really at the end was protect your hearing. You can't control what happened in the past with your ears or with your tinnitus, but you can prevent some episodes of tinnitus spikes and further damage. And I think he changed my mind on that a little bit where I I may have said earlier, you know, it's okay to, it's okay to be, you know, around a band and around some loud noise and loud music, like, you know, within reason, it's okay. It's good to just live a normal life. But he might've changed my mind to now say, actually, let's not take any chances. We've already done a lot. We don't want to take this major step backwards. Let's just use some earplugs, still have fun, still go out, still have a great life. So I'm, I'm definitely with you on that. How did, how did people respond when you asked them to uh, wear the earplugs? Well, I mean, uh, you get a lot of pushback from from some of the, the manly mans, you know. <laughs> They're like, ah, oh, you know, if I go deaf, I go deaf. But at that point, I was like, you know, there's there's worse things than deaf. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, I think your, your story here is really important for us to share. And this has been a nice, friendly conversation. If you guys are listening on YouTube, right below, let us know that you're listening. Just write, I hear you, Chris. Comment below on YouTube, I hear you, Chris. And I know that this story, I think, will be uh, well-received, Chris. So I, I appreciate your time and also uh, choosing to, to work with our team at Triple Health. So uh, I wish you well, my friend. Keep protecting your hearing. Keep living your life. Keep, you know serving people and of course let us know how we can help all right? all right thanks so much hey guys dr ben here hope that was enjoyable working with chris now if you'd like to take the tinnitus quiz to find out more details about your case click the button right on the screen and you can take the tinnitus quiz today thanks so much see you soon